Is it possible to make your okay sounding and average looking video look and sound more professional using CapCut? Yes, yes it is. Now let's see how we can make your videos that don't look or sound so great look and sound more pro. First, go ahead and download all the elements we use in this video, link in the description below. Do it right now so you don't forget. First, we're going to enhance the audio. Let's jump into CapCut. I'm gonna take my clip and we're going to watch a couple seconds just so you can see how it looks and sounds before. Is it possible to make your okay sounding and average looking video so it looks and sounds just okay. The lighting is fine, the background is boring, the audio is too low and kind of echoey. The mic is good, but I'm far away from the mic, and if you're far away from the mic, it sounds bad. Even with this mic, this is a thousand dollar mic left over from my voiceover days. If I stand back here, the audio suddenly sounds terrible. So more important than having a great mic is being close to the mic. Now it sounds considerably better. For this clip, we're going to fix the second half of the video right after I snap. So I'm going to hit Shift Z to zoom in on the timeline. And I'm going to, I can see the snap in the timeline because there's barely a waveform right there. And I'm going to let the snap complete. Then I'm going to cut the clip right here by hitting Command B on a Mac or Control B on a PC and we're going to fix the audio on this clip. The first thing we're going to do is click on audio, making sure this is highlighted, select loudness normalization, and that fixes a lot. Look and sound more professionally. So it sounds better because the audio is normalized, which does a little better job than just raising the volume, but it's still kind of echoey because I'm so far away from the mic. To fix that, we can use this pro feature called Enhance Voice. I click on that, and I find that around 50% works pretty well. It takes a second to process, but now let's see if we can hear a difference. Average looking video. Look and sound more professionally. So step one, check. Sounds way better, right? Step number two, let's make the background blurry. Now, one thing that you see all the time in well done YouTube videos and in every movie to make a subject pop out from the scene, you gotta make the blurry background. There are many ways to do that when you're filming, but if you fail to do that when you're filming or your camera is not so great at it, here's what you can do in CapCut. The first thing we're going to do is turn the track magnet off so that clips don't slide over automatically. We want more control. So I'm gonna turn this off. So now when I slide that over, it just stays there. I'll hit Command Z to undo that. Next, we're going to duplicate this layer. To do that, I'm gonna hold down the Option key on a Mac and the Alt key on a PC, click and drag up. And it didn't line up exactly, so one thing you can do to make sure things line up better is to make sure that snapping is on by clicking on this guy right here. Now when I drag it up, it's gonna have a much easier time snapping into place. Also, I do not need two layers of audio here, so I'm gonna drag this audio down, otherwise it would sound bad. Next, we're gonna just cut me out of the top layer so I can blur out the background layer. To do that, I click on video, cut out, auto cut out. Notice that it only cuts out human figures. It said right before I, I clicked it and did it. And now I am cut out from the background. Can you tell? No, you can't because the background's identical. I'm gonna turn off the background like this and you can see that I'm cut out and it does a pretty great job of cutting me out. In the old days, you had to shoot against a green screen or a blue screen and chroma key it and it was a pain. CapCut makes it super easy. Next, to blur out the background, I'm going to click on effects type in the word blur here in the search bar, and it'll give me a bunch of blur options. We have this pro lens blur version, but you don't even need that. And I think in this case, the generic blur works even better than one of the free version. I'm gonna click and drag it down here. And now we can adjust the blur strength. And you know, right around here in the 40s is pretty good, too much. And that's that's kind of extreme. But down here, it looks, it looks pretty dang good around, you know, 45 or so. So not bad. And if we play it for a second. Using CapCut? I mean, it might be a little bit too much, so let's just take it down a little bit more. So there, you know, we'll, we'll stick with 29. How's that? Everyone on YouTube is, you know, 20 or 30, and I'm 60, so I'd like to look closer to their age. To do that, we click on this top layer, we click on Video Enhance, and we have this feature called Face. There's a bunch of other features, we're just talking about this one. To enhance my face, I choose how many people are in here, one or more, it's just one guy, so single mode. And then I can start messing with these sliders to make me look, you know, less wrinkly and more like you, who's probably, you know, 20 or 30. We've got some pro features, some free features. The free features are, are great. In fact, it might be all you need. So if I drag this down, it just starts to smooth out my face. Oh, that's, that's kind of great. And we've got some smile lines here. We can kind of get rid of those. And if you see these start to go down, brighten my eyes so they pop a little more. Some more poppy, dark circles. I don't really have dark circles too bad, but you know, this stuff, it all helps. And oh, whiten my, uh, my brown teeth from a lifetime of, you know, being alive. And 
you can't see a ton here, but I'm going to drag this down so it's bigger and turn it off and on. And you'll see like, I'll never want to be seen in public ever again without this filter on me. So we got to figure out how to make this IRL. For you old people, that means in real life. And I turn it off, bam, old dude. Turn it on, hey, I'm like 20, right? The lighting here is fine, but it's kind of boring, not very vibrant. What can we do about it? Well, luckily, CapCut's got a really cool AI feature called Relight. You click on Video Basic, you scroll down to, oh look, it's called Relight. It is a pro feature. We can relight the background. We can relight me, and it doesn't matter if there are two layers or not, but we're going to do it with two layers. Since we have two layers here, I'm gonna click on the background. I'm gonna click on Relight, and I have some options. I can choose Ambient, or Facial, or Creative, or Presets. In this case, we wanna change the ambience, the background here. And I can choose one of these to start with. Let's just choose Teal Light, because I love teal and orange. And bam, it did a great job there. It already looks better, but let's just do a little bit more so you can see how it works. We have three lights on this preset. One of them is for the light on the left. You can click on it and see and adjust it. The other one on the right, and there's one here in the middle. Now this one in the middle is a directional light that we don't need because I just want two lights. So to get rid of it, you just hit this little X right here. But I want this light to be more intense. Let me just show you the features and how it works. There are two types of light, a directional light, which is the light pointing a direction. It's got an arrow the direction it's pointing. You can see as I move it around, it's pointing the light in the direction of the arrow. There's also a point light. That's the only other kind. And a point light just emits light evenly from all sides around it. So if I put it over here, it's evenly emitting this orange light from all the sides. In our case, that would work, but we wanna use a directional light to have a little bit more control. And we can choose to light the background or people or both and you know, it's, we can't really light people on this one. If I put it on people, you know, not a lot's gonna happen because our people is, is, is covered by this guy. If I turn that guy off, we can say, oh, it's lighting the people. But we don't want that, we're doing the background, so we're gonna click on the background again, and we're gonna make it say, background. And we're gonna drag it over here and make it more intense. So to increase the intensity, well, you just drag the slider over, increases the intensity, and I would like it to be less bright, so it's more, you know, vibrant. So I'm gonna drag this down and, oh yeah, look at that. That's, I think that's way cooler, right? And highlights will adjust the high points a little bit, but it doesn't do a ton because this is already pretty dark. And the radius determines how far the light goes. Right now it's down pretty low. If I drag it back, the light's ending here. If I drag the radius to the right, it lights the entire scene, but you lose some of the color and the saturation. We want it to go about halfway, so we get this kind of cool look, a little brighter on top, a little darker on the bottom. And then we want the right side to kind of match that, and we're gonna change the color on that one. To do that, we click on light two, which is this guy right here. And I want that to be purple. I like purple. See, I got no, purples on that side, right? I like purple. So we're going to click on color and drag this guy over to this purpley. Oh yeah. Vibrant. Yeah. That looks great. Right. And I drag it up here and we're going to mess with the intensity a tiny bit, just maybe a little more intense, a little more radius. Oh, I'm actually maybe a little less radius on that so that it doesn't cross so much with the orange on that side. And then I'm going to take the brightness down just a little bit. And then we have a pretty cool, intense orange and purple background. They're, they're kind of contrasty colors. And I think I like that, but I look terrible. I'm too bright. I don't match the background at all. How do you fix that? Well, we click on the top layer right here and we go back to relight and we choose facial. Yeah. And how about warm light? Think that'll work? I don't think it looks great. So what do you do? Well, first of all, we know that we are on light two, which is this guy right here. It's lighting me from below me, which I don't really like. I want it to be up here. So I'm going to drag it there. And it's too, it's too bright and too intense and it's too orange. So I'm going to take this orange color, slide it to the left a little bit. So it's a little bit closer to a human being tone and not that crazy color. I don't need the object to be both, it's just a people. So I'm gonna change it to people, which changed how that landed on me a little bit too. And I'm gonna take the intensity down quite a bit. And I'm gonna drag this guy a little farther away. And I'm gonna mess with the radius. Watch what happens when I drag it down. It's not hitting my face at all, it's ending right there. This is kind of the old color just tweaked a little bit. If I drag it over here, notice that you can see it going across my face and even starting to hit the other side of my face, the shadow side of my face, but it does it really realistically. So it looks, it looks dang good. Next, we want to mess with the brightness a little bit more because it's too bright. Highlights are all the way down. If I take it all the way up, it'd look terrible. But if I hit brightness and take it down a little bit, it's going to make it 
much, much more consistent with the background. That's not bad at all. And this light, this is this blue light on the other side. You know, we should have it so that a little bit of this purple kicks on on my face because it would bounce from the background and probably hit the side of my face a little bit. So I'm gonna change the color of that guy to purple right around to make it as similar as possible to that other color we got going on. That's pretty close. And then I'm going to increase the radius a little bit so it actually hits my face and increase the intensity so we can actually see it. And that's too much. Just a little teeny hint. I'm going to pull it away from me a tiny bit. And this is one of those things you just mess with until you get a look that you like. And I think right about there looks pretty good. I'm going to turn the intensity down a little bit because it's a little bit too obvious. Just a little bit of a hint of purple on that side. And now I think this image looks much more pleasing. Just for comparison, this is before and this is after. What do you think looks looks better so far without, without the circles? Here we go again. Before, after, before, after. By the way, if you'd taken my course, edit with Trevin Master CapCut, you'd already know how to do all of this stuff. Plus, you'd know how to get way more views on your videos. Are you getting as many views as you want? I bet you're not. If you're not, put nope in the comments below and then take my course, edit with Trevin Master CapCut. Next, there's one more really cool thing we can easily do to look way more pro and people think, whoa, that guy knows how to edit. What do we do? We just add some text. So let's go ahead and click on text, but not just adding text. We're making it look cool. You're going to take that default text, drop it onto the timeline. We'll put it on top and I'm going to make it last the duration of the rest of this thing. And I'm gonna put in a word that says yes, because I asked a question and the answer was yes, as, as I recall, I think that's right. So I'm gonna make sure I have text basic selected, type in the word yes, but it's too small and the font sucks. So let's go to font, instead of system, let's use something big and fancy. Oh, and dude, by the way, new feature. I've been begging for this from the day I opened CapCut. You can now search for text. See that little search bar? So let's type in a font that we want. How about modern? And bam, there's one that says modern. That's a pro one, but we'll take it. It looks nice and fat and readable. This is too small. So I'm gonna drag the font size way up because that text is going to be just super obvious. And you know, text is text, but wouldn't it be cooler if it was behind us? So I'm gonna drag it behind us by just dragging it between these two layers. I know a lot of people have this issue. I have a whole video on it, but in case you like, I can't drag the text below, what do I do, Trevor? Just click anywhere but on one of these clips in the timeline so you get the details window. Go over to modify and check this box here, free layer. Make sure the free layer is on the right under details and project settings and hit save. Then you'll be able to drag the text under here. So the text I think looks pretty great right here, but I want it to come on at the right time. So let's go ahead and have a listen and see when it should come on. Look and sound more professional using CapCut? Yes. Right if I say CapCut, I want yes to appear. So I'm going to just drag this over to the right and we'll have yes pop on right there, but just popping on is boring. Now we could animate it using keyframes. By the way, I have a whole video on keyframing. So you have more control over these animations linked uh, there or there. I, I never know. I never know where it is, but check it out after this video. But we're not going to keyframe it because CapCut makes it way easier with text animations. Make sure you click on the text down here, then click on text up here, click on animation. We have all these ways to make the text come into the scene without having to manually animate it. Free, paid, whatever. They're all great. We'll just use pop-up. How about this one? Yeah. Bam, that looked great. Did you see that? Let's watch it again. Yes. I love that. And it was about a half second. I think the duration was correct. And I think this looks great. Those are the five things. Here's a little bonus thing for sticking around to the end. I'm going to click on this top layer and this is lit cool, but I don't love it. It feels like it needs to be a little more vibrant. So I'm going to click on this top layer and go to adjustment and scroll down to adjustments and just kind of mess with this a little bit so it pops a little bit more. And one thing that I do in almost every video clip of my face is I drag the highlights down a little bit so they're not so different from the shadows on the right side. I drag the shadows up a bit and then I go into curves. Now I know curves are fancy and scary, but just click on curves right here. There's, you know, there's RGB and then there's the contrast one, the brightness one here. So we can mess with this just briefly. So I want to take the highlights up a little bit so the whites look a little bit whiter. This is white on this side. This is black on this side. I'm going to click kind of somewhere between towards the whites. Add a beat, a little dot right here. I'm just going to drag it up a little bit to make my face a little bit brighter. And then the darks, I want a little darker. So I'm going to just drag this beat down here a tiny bit to make the blacks a little blacker. Yeah, yeah. And I think that looks a lot better. And this is called an S-curve. And that's kind of a starting place for 
a lot of videos you created just adds a little more contrast. I'm going to go back to basic again and add just a little bit of saturation by scrolling down here and adding a tiny bit of saturation more. So I pop a little more. Yeah, there we go. Not like that. Much, much better. I know I sometimes go, hey, and here's the final masterpiece, but I've done more stuff like added sound effects and things. So I'm just going to show you what I'm doing here in case you want to know how I made that, that opening shot look exactly like that opening shot. And it's by adding some sound effects. I'm going to add a quick whoosh right here that kind of lands right about when I snap. And then I've got this hard effect, this hard impact effect, hard hit effect. I'll get it right some way. And I've, I've given you these, I actually use these a lot. I've got some, these are like kind of a, a BAMF sound effect that I use for a lot of stuff. So you'll want to download these. They're, they're very useful. So watch this. Average looking video. Look. Okay, and that didn't hit exactly right. I want to hit when my fingers snap. You sometimes have to mess a little bit to get it to line up exactly, exactly right. So I want the whoosh and the hard hit to hit at the same time as my snap. And that looked great, except that the light changed color too late. So we want to drag this back just a little bit and drag these back as well. And it's going to have to redo a few things because we're we're modifying some stuff. And let's see if that works a little better. I can worry about the voice. Looking video. Come on. Looking video. Look. Okay. And now with this stuff lined up, it looks like this. Looking video. Look and sound more professional using CapCut. Yes. Okay, and obviously that yes needs a sound effect. There's actually a good sound effect built in to CapCut right here. If I go to, I think, sound effects and type swish. God, I'm so glad they have these searches in here now. Maybe this one. Yeah, that one's kind of great. And I'm going to grab that and take it down a tiny bit. Now, this snappy thing is okay with the sound effects now, but... It could use a transition. Now, here's a side note from a Hollywood editor. The transition that is used 99% of the time in real Hollywood movies and TV shows and commercials is a straight cut, just going from one clip to the next one with no fancy schmutz in between. But sometimes it's kind of cool, and CapCut has a lot of really cool transitions built in. So we're going to add a, a fun transition here to polish this thing off. We're going to highlight all of the video clips, including the text. Right-click and choose Create Compound Clip. We're going to the exact frame where... It changed from that to way cooler. And we're going to add a cut there by hitting Command B on a Mac or Control B on a PC. Then we're going to jump over into transitions and find this electric light 2 or any transition. This is a pro one. You may not have it. Any of these will work. They're kind of cool. I'm going to grab electric light 2, drag it down here, make it a little bit shorter. And now this transition will look like this. Average looking video. Look. What? Way cool, right? To watch the final masterpiece, you want to just go back to the beginning of the video and, and watch the whole thing because there's a lot to learn and you probably forgot all of it already. One thing that can totally make you look way more pro is to understand color correction and color grading. No, they're not the same thing. You need to watch my video on color correction and color grading right here, right now, so you can just, you know, smoke everyone else.